Remember when Elon Musk applied the state media label to PBS and NPR? Well, NPR says it is quitting Twitter. <laughs> Whoopee f***ing do. It is the first major U.S. outlet to stop using Twitter since Elon Musk took over the company. Earlier this month, Twitter labeled national public radio as, quote, state-affiliated media. NPR pushed back on that, saying it operates independently of the U.S. government and that Twitter is trying to undermine its credibility. Look who's talking. Obscenely accurate, since they're literally funded by the state. But, unfortunately, must back down and remove those labels. Let's be real here. PBS and NPR are undeniably state media. And just like most of our so-called free press, they helped to cover up real news that was bad for Joe Biden in order to influence the election in his favor. That alone should end all of their credibility. Not to mention, they have a blatant left-wing Democrat Party-focused agenda. That doesn't sound like very public media to me, especially when Democrats are in charge of the country and should be getting more scrutiny than usual. Take this recent panel on PBS NewsHour, where the host, an obvious Democrat, an extreme far-left Democrat, and a fake conservative that hates Republicans, demonize the most prominent Republican next to Trump as a racist simply for opposing extreme left-wing policies, which is sort of his job as a Republican. We're going to get right into that clip after this quick message from Noble Gold about a free coin offer. Imagine the confidence that comes with a retirement backed by a tangible, proven asset gold. An asset that's not at the mercy of unpredictable market swings. Fend off concerns about economic downturns and let your wealth thrive with the timeless security of precious metals. This month, the first solid quarter ounce gold standard bullion coin ever issued with Charles III's image can be yours with your own qualifying gold IRA or 401k rollover with $50,000 or higher. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold Investments. So call Noble Gold Investments at 877 646-5347 to get started or visit noblegoldinvestments.com that's noblegoldinvestments.com find the link in the description pin comment and if you call make sure to tell them drone tech sent you and remember there's always risk in investment and there are no guarantees of any kind So when Governor DeSantis says we're going to fight woke in the schools, woke in the corporations, woke in the so on and so forth, what is he really saying? I don't know. Unreal. The host laughing as he quotes a legitimate political stance is your first sign that this is a charade. Your second clue is that they asked this question, yet didn't bring anybody on to answer it. Because the entire purpose of this segment is to demonize anyone who stands up to the woke cult. Which is basically just an unquestioning mob of extreme far leftists forcing their pseudo-religious beliefs and conspiracy theories on the rest of us. What is he really saying? I don't know. No, Jeff, I, I'm being serious. I do not know. I would love for the governor to define woke. What does it mean to him? Because to me and millions of other Americans, when Republicans start spouting off about woke this and that, it's usually something that an aggrieved person on the right usually doesn't like. What are you talking about? Or maybe Jonathan Capehart is just projecting here because he and his fellow woke supremacists love dropping their label bombs like racist, white supremacist, and threat to democracy at whatever they don't like. Wokeness has been defined over and over again, but they'll just continue to play dumb about it like they did with critical race theory. Wokeness refers to a far left extremist ideology that has been adopted by the left and Democrats. I just call it a Marxist revolution in America because it's got all the familiar symptoms. About what's happening in the country. Oh, I don't know about African Americans wanting the fullness of American history being taught in schools or LGBTQ plus Americans wanting to be able to just have their kids go to school and be able to talk about what's go what what did they do that weekend without getting their teacher or themselves in trouble. Those are just two examples. All right, he's just lying and misleading here. This is not about teaching black history, which has been and will continue to be taught. This is about injecting far left ideology and revisionist history that's been derived from from that into the public school system. So what these teachers are doing, and they're being trained on this, this is in our trainings, is they are being trained to treat students differently based on the color of their skin. So the whole, when you hear the term equity, that's what that means. We're getting away from equality and going to equity, which is basically make sure you treat people with what they need instead of making sure things are equal. So people of color or black kids, they need 
special attention and they need, you know, lowered standards and let's make sure we're, you know, and then and our white kids, and I've seen this in trainings, I've even exposed the videos of them, um, where they tell the white kids they need to be more quiet. Let the, let the, let the people of color talk. That's the fullness he's talking about. There is no right to push your ideological or religious belief in the public school system. Lastly, this so-called LGBT plus stuff that's being banned in the schools is literally pornography, which instructs kids about how to give blowjobs and use adult sex apps. Why do kids need to learn about blowjobs and adult sex apps, Jonathan? Why can't you just leave the kids alone? Why can't public school teachers just teach them the things they need to know and leave all that stuff up to the parents? Oh, but they can't do that because the parents are the enemies to Marxist revolutionaries like Jonathan Capehart here. To Jonathan's point, I was speaking with a Republican strategist who said the, the political utility of woke is that it is whatever you want it to be <laughs> and it is whatever the listener hears. Again, they're so sure of this because it's what they do on a regular basis with labels like threat to democracy, weapon of war, assault weapon, racist. It's whatever the listener wants it to be. Uh, well, yes and no. First First, I should say, DeSantis is obviously quoting Churchill or citing Churchill there, we'll fight them on the beaches yeah, on landing strips. Uh, it's offensive. <laughs> Churchill was talking about the Nazis. Uh, and to compare fellow Americans to even evoke the, an anti-Nazi speech as an anti-fellow American speech hmm. is just an offensive rhetorical device. What the actual f did you just say to me right now? No, this is woke propaganda masquerading as news. The sheer obscene level of chutzpah involved in a state media hack making this critique of Ron DeSantis? It's enough to tear a hole in space-time and in the universe. Forget the media, which we all know regularly accuses Democrats' political opponents of being Nazis and white supremacists. But we got Joe Biden, Democrats, and PBS's own star director, Ken Burns, who endlessly and baselessly demonize any American who opposes them as Nazis, even down to staging fake Nazis to influence the outcome of an election. David Brooks, unsurprisingly has done it himself. Uh, David, the visual, the hands go up. Trump asks for a pledge. Wow. I just, I was flabbergasted. We're going to get Trump. We might as well get the Nuremberg rallies to go with it. Oh, that was different. The reason the woke movement is compared to Nazis is because they look and act like them. As always, these ghouls on PBS are either lying or lack any semblance of self-awareness. If they wanted somebody to articulate wokeness, they could have brought somebody on their show like Chris Rufo, but they don't want to because they don't want people knowing what they're doing. All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thanks for watching.